Zach. We, we didn't do the voiceover. Um, we didn't do the voiceover. No. Um, what, what this needs is a kind of... He's Mark, and I'm Zach, and this is Pull or Pass. But... Yeah. At the right time, I guess would be traditionally the music where we stops. would have it. Yeah. Hello, and welcome to Pull or Pass, your weekly geekly... Weekly geekly? Twice in a row, <sighs> Easy Mark. for me to say. Weekly geeky comic book radio show. I'm Mark and he's Zach. Hello. How are you doing? We, we really need to sort that voiceover thing, don't we? Aye. Aye, we do. Yeah, it would be nice. But, hey. At, at least we know. It's a, you know, pull our past to-do list type thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Ne- next week. Yeah. I, I feel good about next week. Episode four. That's can you write it, please? Want. I can try. Go on then. Do, do, do something nice that makes us look cool and Semi-competent. not like we're dithering over over a theme tune we've had for a month anyway welcome to the show <laughs> have you got any good news this week zach um i've not got a lot it's been a quiet ish kind of week i thought that too um, what have you got though so what i've got is so zoe kravitz has been cast as catwoman in the batman opposite um robert pattinson who might be my batman we don't know yet well he could be your batman but um I'm quite pleased about this, more for the reason that I can play Lenny Kravitz later in the show, but... I mean, it's a bit of a cheat, but I like it. She's good, though, isn't she? She's been in stuff, and she was good in stuff. Is this your way of admitting you can't remember what she's been in? Absolutely right, it is. I remember Lenny Kravitz was in in that that teen fiction one, with, with with the high death count and the bow and arrow and the Katniss Everclean, or whatever her name was. Oh, um, Hunger Games. That's the one. I don't know where I don't know where um, Zoe Kravitz has been, but she looks good. She looks the part. Yeah, she she looks like a believable Catwoman, and that it does. Not something we always get. So no, she was in Mad Max. She was oh, okay. oh. she was Angel in gotcha. um, X Men First Class. Got yeah. This might have become evident already that this is me looking through IMDb. Right, yeah, but, but still, that's cool. At least I'm bringing you information that is valid. Yeah. So yeah, that. I'm interested. I, I'm kind of weirdly intrigued about this Batman film. I feel like we know nothing about it, and that's all right. I'm, well, I'm cool with that. I'm down. Well, I, as with everything, I think these days, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. A lot of people were down on a lot of different things, and sometimes they were right, but quite yeah. a lot of the time they weren't. You know, I, I like to stay. Stop, I like to try and do words in the right order. I like to try and stay optimistic about different films. I mean. DC have been a little bit all over the place, but yeah, that doesn't mean this one's going to be bad. This could be this could be the Batman film. It could. It could be looking back in ten years, going, "Wow, I can't believe we thought Dark Knight was the best Batman was going to get." Right. <laughs> we don't know, do we? We don't. We'll see. Talking about DC films, um, contrary to my prediction last week, Joaquin Phoenix has said, "Yeah, I'd like to do some more Joker," which is exactly huh. the opposite of what I predicted last week. Um, I mean, it was on Lad Bible, so you know, I'm not quite not sure 100. percent Basically, true. gospel. They'll be printing it in books next week. But um, um, still, I, I am surprised. Yeah, please, I, I, I'm quite surprised at that. I, as a standalone film, I don't, I don't know if we need any no, more. Neither do I. In a way, I would still totally go and see it because Joaquin Phoenix was the money. He was brilliant. See, yeah, I, I just don't know what you do with a follow up probably have heavily more more batman which maybe is what we don't need i think the strength of the film is kind of the lack of yeah batmaning yeah i think so have you actually seen it now i have seen it now did you like it i did like it my my only criticism has been that i think all the things that make it a good film kind of don't need to be joker um, I, th- I think all the themes that are quite poignant and interesting it's like w- would well, I think all those themes would be still be you know prominent and important to discuss without the clown. That's interesting. But maybe that's just me. Yeah, and um, my partner that I went with said that it was a three star film with a five star performance for Joaquin Phoenix. I can kind of see that. And yeah. That, um, I'm not sure I agree with him, but he he also said that the there was the film was so basic plot. 
that yeah. it, it just happened to have the performance of the year, which I can see the argument. I'm, I'm not sure I agree completely, but I do feel like it's a very special film that I hope the sequel would do justice rather than be no good. I I, I can, yeah, I, I can see that. I I guess it would depend on where the sequel was going to go and what kind of... Mm stuff we're going to get into. If it is going to be more Batman, I'd, it's quite a departure from this. I mean, um, it could be an, um, a Joker and Harley Ra- Harley Race, Harley Quinn um, film. That could be interesting with that Joker taking yeah. out his horrible, horrible life on, on a poor, unfortunate partner. That would be an interesting take. And we've got all the pieces there. We, we've seen, you know, Arkham and... Apparently he's most comfortable in Arkham, and yeah, I guess all the threads could be there to slow that together. But I'm still genuinely surprised that it's that it's, it's even being discussed because I would have thought Joaquin Phoenix would have been like, nah, done that onto my next yeah. incredibly, incredibly like important role of doing a good act, a ring. <laughs> you know, I, what I'm I mean. pre- I'm pretty sure that's how his biography is going to read. Yeah. <laughs> have you got any other news? Um. It's it's not a majorish thing, but it's a, it's a thing that I saw that's cool. So I'm going to go to that. Um, yeah. So Clayton Henry, who has been a comic book artist forever, I don't know. He um he did uh, Archer and Armstrong, Incredible Hercules, a few other kind of. Incredible Hercules was one I wanted to read and I never got around to. Is it, it good? It's a good read. Yeah. Um, mm. But he um last week released. I I meant to send these to you. I forgot. Released some concept sketches he's been doing, and no one knows what for, of the X-Men. So you've got three different kinds of Jubilee. Oh. um, Which are all quite different and quite nice and quite... Can you put, like, a link to this on our Facebook page once the show's aired and then yes, can see can. what you're talking been about? Yes, I can. Been meaning to do it for a week. Oh, there you um, go. So he's, he's done some sketches of Jubilee, some sketches of Wolverine, and um, the kind of general buzz about it seems to be that are these the concept designs for the x-men 92 follow-up cartoon that (gasps) we were meant to be getting oh i want so badly and the designs are good i mean wolverine is like a tree of a man he's huge i want this so stocky and jubilee's got you know we've seen different jackets and different takes on the kind of 90s costume so okay the, I, I like Clayton Henry and I like the art we've got here for some. I'm kind of hoping that's what this is. And well, Disney Plus did do their look what we're having on Disney Plus yeah. thing this week, and there was a lot. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of MCU films missing, the more recent ones, but there was still a lot of pretty good stuff. Yeah, it's it's a pretty solid list, and I think if we had a lot more time, we could get into that. Yeah. But. <laughs> Shout out to my friends on uh, Without a Mouse. Um, listen to their podcast, particularly the episode I'm on in future. Um, I'm talking about the cat from outer space, and um, the cat from outer space is on Disney Plus. Okay, not not not, not, not that we'll have it by then, but still, I was really curious what the tie-in was going to be there. Right? Yeah, but um, I think I'm on at some point in November. Okay, we've, we've recorded it already, but they're like way ahead of their schedule because uh, they don't blow. have to like record on a weekly basis like we do. But yeah, that sounds nice up. in a way. Without a Mouse podcast, they're brilliant, and they talk about really bad old Disney films, and it's um, it's a fun it's a fun podcast. Yeah, yeah. Plug cool. is over. I have got a bit more news. Did you see that they've um, for the fourth time they've given us the release date for the New Mutants film? I I, I didn't see this. But... It is the fourth time. <laughs> um, the trailer was two years ago. Um, but and they've apparently they've been doing reshoots to make it more horror because the test audience has wanted it to be more horror. I'm calling that as nonsense. And um, but apparently the release date is the third of April, 2020. I I would like to see it, but who knows whether that's actually the release date? This is so. When the trailer came out, I it, it seemed like a horror film, incidentally, with mutants. Yeah, and and since then. With the Disney takeover, I I just assumed this was going to be one of those films that went away and no one ever talked about. Well, they filmed it, so they might as well release it. Yeah, no, they're refilming it. Yeah, true. So I don't know. I, 
I'll kind of take April with a pinch of salt and we'll see. I, I mean, I, I want to see the film. The trailer was superb and I want to see the film. But what year is it going to come out? It, yeah, I'll just believe it when I see it. Two years since the trailer. It'll be two and a half years by the time it's on the screen. So it must be, what, three years since they actually first started filming that? Yep. That's, yep. That is a long time for yep. any X-Men film. <laughs> Dear me. Um, for any film well any film yeah as well I guess yeah um, maybe it'll be good I, I I feel like it's one of those as well that Disney will probably release it and then go don't worry we're rebooting the mutants anyway so yeah and I guess it will probably be the last of that the Fox batch do you think that's maybe why they're they're kind of like holding back on bringing mutants into the MCU because they've still got this one last film to re- re- release. Um, kind of, yeah. I think it could be a case of wanting to wrap up everything Fox have done. And, um, you know, well, we've we've had the last season of Legion now. So I think it might have been wanting to get the things out that have been mm. made and have been successful. And then yeah. it means you can, you know, start afresh and people won't get confused. It's, it's one of those that I think comic book fans often overlook that a lot of the general public aren't very very interested in if the X-Men aren't part of the MCU. Yeah. Um, unless it's something you're into, some people just don't know and don't yeah. really care. So I, I guess yeah. they, they don't want that confusion of, well, why isn't James McAvoy here? Or True, true. But that's, that's my assumption is that it's like wanting a safe bit of separation. Same mm. with the Fantastic Four, I assume. They just need to... I think we'll probably Sweet see Fantastic past iterations Four. under the rug. I think we'll see Fantastic Four first before we see X Men. I think. Yeah, probably. I, they're two huge parts of Marvel to introduce, and Fantastic Four are considerably easier to slot in. Yeah, yeah, true. And they come with some great villains, though. Kang the Conqueror. Come on. I know you like Kang, but uh, I think the big one is Galactus. No, no, no. the big one. The big one is Mole Man. Mole Man, okay. And the Yancey Street Gang. All things that I will happily take in some kind oh, of bizarre I love- iteration on screen. <laughs> I, I would happy, happily go for like a Ben Grimm and the Yancey Street Gang TV series that's like half an hour bites of ludicrous television. Ben Grimm and the Yancey Street Gang. It's got money written all over it, Zach. You can get like a New York hip-hop soundtrack over the top of that. All day. I'll make this show. If- uh, sounds... <laughs> delightful have you got any more news um, i don't have any more news no but... i don't i mean it's a relatively slow news week I've but seen... I, I think the new mutants thing is actually quite an interesting thing at least it's it's an intriguing one it's something that i've managed to miss which might just it was be... on lad bible again I, I, maybe i'm not into lad bible enough is that what i don't this know is? why lad bible is coming up on my facebook feed have they become your source of information i'm not sure how no. I feel about this. it was just like i clicked these two links and I'm like, they were both lad bible and i was like Lad Bible? I don't know. All the other sources had nothing. Um, that, well, that's the thing. I've, I've been kind of, you know, checking every day if anything mm. has, has come. Um, so the, maybe we need to keep checking Lad Bible? O- only other thing I've got is that it's been announced that Matthew Rosenberg is doing the new Hawkeye series at Marvel. I like Hawkeye. I like Matthew Rosenberg. <laughs> Easy for me to say today. So it's good news so, for you then? It's good news. Yeah? Cool. Right. Yeah, that's... So that was the news. Before we go into our main meat of whether or not we're going to pull a pass our three books, it is competition time, Zach. I had forgotten about this. It's yes, competition it is competition time. time. We Tell have got, it, Mark. Yeah, we have got a big fat pile of 50 single-issue comic books. A lot of them are from um, this year's... New, co- not new comic book day, free comic book day. But a lot of them are books that we've passed on previously in, um, on this show and on Geek of the Week, my old show. But maybe they're for you and not us. Exactly right. A lot of them were books that were, we, we said they were okay, but they weren't for us, you know. So basically, big fat pile of 50 comic books. And rather than me bother to put them on individually on eBay, because that would be far too much effort, we thought we'd give them away as a prize. So if you want 50 comic books, you should enter our competition. You may have seen our fabulous new logo provided by Fab Radio. 
which says pull or pass and there's like a superhero behind it like kind of like with pull or pass shooting out of his hand and well he hasn't got a name and I think we should have a competition to name our superhero what do you think Zach? I, I like it it's a good idea it's so I'm scared about what we're going to end up with I but... know I mean if we really hate all the engines we can just call him Bob but Bob the superhero Bob the superhero Super Bob Super Bob but um, if you would like to enter, send us a private message on Twitter, that's at Pull or Pass. Or you can send us a private message on our Facebook group, just search for Pull or Pass Radio Show on Facebook. We'll be putting reminders on Facebook and Twitter after the show has aired. But um, yeah, come and talk to us. Talk to us on the social medias. Also, we're on YouTube, but I suppose you could put a YouTube comment if you wanted or something. And Mark will get back to you. But that's actually dead hard <laughs> to find. So uh, if you want to listen to us on YouTube, just kind of like um, wait for me to post on the Twitter what the YouTube link is because I did try and find it without being logged in as myself and I couldn't find it for love nor money. So yeah, Facebook, YouTube, <clears throat> probably, preferably not YouTube, Facebook or Twitter, send us a message with your entry, what you think our superhero should be called. We're also on Spotify. We are on Spotify, but you can't comment there. No, you can't comment there. But if you want to listen to us on Spotify and talk to us elsewhere, just like search for Pull or Pass, and how, you, you find us. How long are we giving people? Like seven days? Or? Yeah, we'll announce the... We'll, um, we'll give them two weeks. Okay. We'll give them two weeks, and we'll announce it on Pull or Pass issue five. Yeah, that sounds good to me. I've just realised I didn't tell people it's issue three today at the start of the show. I'm not having a good show, really. Incidentally, yeah. that will appear it's, in um, the name of the show somewhere. Yeah, it's like Pull or Pass, Issue 3. Hello. Um, <laughs> welcome to the show. Again. But, um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So we're going to do Pull or Pass. I thought I'd play the X-Men transition because I like it. We're going to do Pull or Pass. We've got three books as usual. We've got X-Men 1 by Marvel. We've got Metal Men 1 by, by DC. By DC. And The Marked 1 by Image. Yeah. All so right. what would you like to talk about first, Zach? I'm easy. I'm, I'm also pretty easy. Um, X-Men. We should right. mentioned it first. Let's go X-Men. Let's talk about X-Men. First thing I would like to say is... Full page spread logo rage. Um, yeah, that's that's something we got in Ho- House of X and Powers of X as well. It's and Ghost Rider and every other Marvel comic that we've had recently. We, we also got that little bit in the middle where they just tell us the layout of Scott Summers' home. Which don't get me wrong, I'm interested. Oh, I quite liked I, that. I thought that was that was interesting at I, least. I'm I'm interested. I just think it's another thing that puts us up from. Two pages of white, uh, four pages, and we, I yeah. think, did we actually get six pages of white in this? I think we the did. Credits yeah. took two pages as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's a lot of just Hickman white pages, which is, it seems to be a thing. He did it in Fantastic Four a bit. He did it in. He still does it in East of West, where you'll just get just took waste. some white in there. It's really I, frustrating, and it you know stuff like Ascender and Descender do use it much more effectively than big logo. Yeah, and I. It's, yeah, it's annoying. It, it, incidentally, there's also. Oh no, we're on. Um, so there's seven white pages in this. Why? Because there was the uh, roster page as well. Yes, which I annoyed me to no end. Really, I found it useful because there was some that I hadn't heard of. I thought, don't get me wrong. I, I, I like a good "Hey, here are the X Men that we're using right now." What mm. bugged me was the words "the first mutant society," because okay. th- that feels like. As long as you ignore all those other mutant societies that came first in Marvel Comics. <laughs> which, which is, it bugs me. I've read a lot of X-Men and I'm like, Genosha, which got destroyed in Grant Morrison's yeah. run. It was an island full of mutants. Yes, it was. Uh, we had, after M-Day, so House of M, mm-hmm. we had um, Mutant Town in New York, which was like, you know, an area of New York where all the mutants lived because there weren't many left. Well, you, you've answered a question I was going to ask. Which is, is this main Marvel continuity? Because I wasn't sure, because it seemed so... This... So supposedly this this is the main universe now. Right, okay. But the changes are so drastic, even from X-Men from earlier this year, that I kind of... I don't trust a word of it, if well, that the, makes sense. And the Whedon run was 
almost like a restart, but wasn't a restart when yeah. that happened as well. Which happens a lot. I think a lot of new creators come into X Men and go, "Well, I- I'm I'm going to respect what we've done beforehand, but I'm going to do a bit of a soft reboot and kind of." But it makes reshape. no sense. It, it it it. I'm glad that you're as confused as I am because I know you you read more X Men than I do, and I wasn't sure whether it was reboot or not. And the fact that it isn't. I, like you say, I think it makes it slightly problematic. Um, I, I, I mean, I feel weird about it because I know a, a lot of people I follow online love this run. They love what Hickman's doing with X Men. So he did the two events. He did House of X, yes, House right. of X, yep. and now we've got this. And everybody loves it, and I, I feel almost like, well, why don't I love this? Why does? What am I missing that's so perfect about it? Yeah. Um, I mean- I, but one thing I did like was that um, at the very start, it, it very much established how ominous Magneto is as a presence, even though he's a in inverted commas good guy these days. Yeah, but I, right, I do like a full page spread, and they'd wasted a full page <laughs> spread on a logo. Imagine if they'd done an ominous Magneto full page spread; would have got the point over much better. Yeah, I, if they'd have saved some space and done that. Just kind of like floating Magneto looming over mortals would have been brilliant, but they didn't. They didn't have space. It's a bit of an odd one. I, I feel like, yeah, yeah, we're getting a lot of white pages, which kind of sacrifices things you could have done with the art. Mm. So this mm. is, um, I've written his name down, Lionel Francis Yu is the artist who's... He's, don't get me wrong, exceptional artwork. He, yeah, he's done a lot of Marvel over the years as well, and he's it's great. Good. It's, it's a very... It's a recognisable style, I think. Some of the... Yeah. Some faces he does, it's like, yeah, you can tell from, you know, miles away who did that. Um, but the, I think the art's good, and I think it suits the book. Um, mm. But there's, there's just little things that, that as someone who's read a lot of X-Men, I'm like, but but why? I can't... I, I spend a lot of my time trying to separate away all the continuity, because I know if I get hung up on it, it's going to drive me insane. But there's things like... When all the summers are together having dinner, yeah, and it's like uh, Gabriel, so Vulcan, is just there f- grilling some steaks. I'm like, but last I saw you, you were trapped in space somewhere, and they never answered where you'd gone. So uh, okay. where have you been for 10 years? Because I like the character, but yeah. seriously, man, where have you been? And like Storm and Scott working together when for 10 years it's been Scott hates... No, Storm hates Scott Summers because he killed Xavier, and I'm like... How are you two just cool now? What? Yeah. What have I missed? And the, so and the the Star Jammers thing with the um, with the sonic screwdriver. Of, you can always come and see us now. Have a flower. <laughs> it was just. I was like, really. It's. I, I get that it's bringing more sci-fi to the X Men, which Hickman often does. He made Fantastic Four very sci-fi, and which makes sense because they got they, their powers they are from quite space. sci-fi. Yeah. yeah. With this, it feels like they've kind of put Krakoa in as this catch-all of, we all live here, we've got flowers that can take us anywhere, we can live where we want. Scott, do you want to live on the moon? Sure, man. I'd love to live on the moon. This is another question. Living on the moon? I mean, this is showing my ignorance of current Marvel comics, but where have the Inhumans gone? I thought they lived on the moon. Um, They did, and then they lived in like a floating version of Atalan. Right. I'm not even Matalan. Sh- Atalan. Oh right, okay. Um but it, it's been a few years since I've read any in humans. I'm not sure. So have they where um, have they like ousted them off they gazumped the inhumans? <laughs> well this isn't there yeah, because Scott lives in the blue zone as well, and it's a bit like Oh uh, yes, of course the the blue zone where oxygen exists on the dark side of the moon. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about that. Um mm. But yeah, what, do you just move in next to the inhumans and or do, are they like you, you're buying property off us. Yeah. You, you're just building a house. You can't do that. This is our moon. Maybe uh, maybe they might fight the Inhumans over the moon. I mean, we, maybe. we had X-Men versus Inhumans. Did we? Yeah. Was it good? Um, It involves the Eterogen Mist killing off all the uh, X-Men, so it's not great oh, okay. in a lot of ways. Um, right. He had his moments. So, so, one of the things about X-Men is, um, obviously... It used to be a metaphor for being gay. It used to be a metaphor for being black. And uh, as much as this feels like an X-Men book, or an X-Men universe at least, I feel like the metaphor's gone. Because 
I don't feel like it would be a positive move for all gay people to move to the moon. Um, interesting, this is a conversation I've had with someone else this week where he, he was confused because a lot of gay people he know are really enjoying what Hitman's doing with them, but he feels the same way as you just I said. Just, that. The, the, you know, the, the, I mean, put, if, we, if we tone it down and say, I don't know, put all the gay people on Jersey... Like a lot of idiot, like a lot of idiot homophobic people or racist people say, put all the black people on Jersey. That's not equality. That's not what you know yeah, we want. And I, I do feel like this book is problematic, and I don't want the metaphor to be a so, metaphor so anymore. Because so, any gay person with sense does not want to, like, I don't know, take over Greece and have Greece as the gay nation. Greece was the nice. first country that came to my head, but you know what um, I mean. No, I, I, I totally agree. I think it's got this weird air of, which we often get with all the X-Men, uh, all the mutants have moved to their own island or the, their own whatever. It sometimes comes across as, but that's the opposite of what Charles Xavier wanted. Like yeah. Charles wanted everyone to be integrated and together. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's I, just a bit of an odd one for me. Yeah, I, f- I found it really problematic and... It immediately made me uncomfortable with what what was an established metaphor mm. that mutants were kind of like hated because of something they can't change. You know, gay people are hated because of something they can't change. But I I, I don't like the way that I don't I don't like it. I I, I totally understand that. I the, the the thing for me has been so none of this feels like main continuity to me. No, and no, that's why I asked. Is it? it? It troubles me that maybe not troubles me. That's more quite extreme, but it, that a lot of the characters have gone back to like nineties costumes, mm. which seems odd. And I'd, for me, it feels like so. Earlier this year, we had Age of X Man, which was a world Nate Gray had created. Again, he thought he'd fix all the problems. I kind of feel like is that what this is as well? Is it going to be that when they came back from Nate's world, they didn't really come back from? To the real world, well, and that would make a lot of still sense. Somewhere else, because well, that would make a lot of sense. You know, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe they'll explain throughout how everything really works and why everything's good and not a bit weird. But mm. yeah, this this isn't the X Men that I wanted it to be. I guess no, and me neither. So it, it's so many characters I like as well. Yeah, I yeah, I, I like the Star Jammers, and I like the summers and all of these guys i like yeah. magneto i like polaris yeah. it's it's like a who's who of characters i quite like but in a story that you don't in a story that i'm a bit like but why tell yeah. me more i don't get it well <laughs> maybe, maybe the argument there is read more but i, I just don't want to spoiler <laughs> it's a pass for me um yeah it, it is a pass for me as well i i'm not even sure i'd read it in trade out of curiosity to be honest with you i See, see that, I'll say the opposite for that because I know, ultimately, at some point, I'm going to think, well, I wonder if, I wonder if it was the great run people said it was, and it just wasn't the right time for me. Mm. But so I might look at it again in the future. But right now, I'm a bit no. It's yeah, I'm, I'm a bit. It's, it's, it's weird quite a strong one. pass for me, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, the, there's just a lot of questions I have that I don't know if they're ever going to get answered. So yeah, should we move yeah. on to Metal Men? Let's move on to Metal Man. So this was a book I went in completely blind. We literally picked it because it was the only number one that DC had this week. Um, It's a 12-issue maxi series, so um, it's going to be like a storyline that finishes in in a year. And I went in completely blind. And I felt that the the summary, the establishment at the very beginning was excellent. And I was like, I really like this concept. I want to read this book. Um, And a lot of comics don't do that. A lot of comics dither or assume you know more than you do, and except, but just three paragraphs gave me exactly the premise, and I was like, "That's brilliant! I want to read this." I I agree. I um, I don't know if I've missed something, but I haven't read anything with the Metal Men since prior to New Fifty Two, so we're talking ten years ago now. So, so, so. The, I was going to say this isn't this isn't like brand new. This is, the, there are Metal Men trades that I can get because I want them. Well. The, <laughs> Um, what I wrote down in my notes here is that, so I, I read, the Metal Men were in the DC event 52, which was like one comic for every yeah, yeah. week, um, 
and, and they were in 52 and they were in kind of some of the spin-off stuff and I, I remember when I read 52 which was a couple of years after it came out went mm-hmm. from the trades that there was a kind of reading list you could get and one of the things was there's a Metal Men book now it's been 10 years Mark and I still don't own this Metal Men book so oh, is it hard to find? impossible to find as far as i could tell oh, okay. so maybe it'll get re-released if this this series is good maybe uh, if it's well received i mean they are re-releasing a lot of kind of mid-2000s dc at the moment so that would be nice i know yeah. there's, there's there's stuff from prior to that that you can get hold of i assume somewhere mm. but um mm. i remember that was the thing that made me interested in metal men i would definitely I be interested in reading some older metal men because the concept's so cool yeah i am um, will magnus as a kind of somewhat protagonist who's the creator of the metal man he's just quite an interesting guy why does someone that young smoke a pipe what's going on there i i need answers um, um I, I can make a suggestion <laughs> but we're a family friendly show <laughs> um this this was a, an interesting one i felt like the art style which was um shane davis i've got here mm-hmm. which felt W- w- seemed very kind of classic 2000s DC. I really liked it. It, c- it could, really could be any it. DC book, and I'm okay with that. I think it suited this one. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the, the it, it, it's very much an Asimov-inspired ethical debate about sentience, yeah. and I bloody love ethical debates <laughs> yeah. about sentience. But Thank you, that, Isaac Asimov. You are the don. That's what I've got here is that it's kind of Asimov, do androids dream yeah. territory of... I love that. It never gets old to me because there's always a new take on it and, yeah. and what is what is humanity? What is life? And and, and again, I, I try not to harp on about it, but I'm, I'm a humanist. I don't believe in a god. And so this kind of thing is fascinating to me because I believe we make our own decisions and shouldn't be influenced by the idea of faith mm. so it's all about thinking it's it's all about humans thinking about life and what life is and bloody wonderful stuff yeah um just really interesting and really liked it um i've it's interesting as well because I, I had always got that the metal men's personality was determined by the the metal they're made of which sounds ludicrous but well hi do see um well yeah but i the idea that that's actually coming from Will Magnus himself and yeah. he's kind of projecting his rage or his whatever onto each of them is like, it's wow, great. okay, that's and there was, a I different mean, explanation. And there was a full-page spread to emphasize his horror and betrayal of these creatures, these entities. And it's just so dark and cynical and bleak and philosophical and... I really, <laughs> really like... This is not the natural way of things. I'm sat here gushing about a DC book. Two weeks in a row, I've been I'm, like, I love DC. I've got and nothing. I'm shocked. I, I just I don't understand DC bringing out stuff that I want. <laughs> the, the, the world is coming to an end. The, my, I think, honestly, one of my only complaints for this is, so in the middle of the book, you're about to have Will say something, and you flip the page to a two-page snicker advert. Oh, th- 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 there was a problem with that in X-Men as well, where serious, serious content. I gecko. Hate, that gecko is an issue, that man. That gecko. He, he, he keeps turning up. But it's interesting because I think up until this show and the, the, the previous show, I am pretty much read everything in trade. And that's obviously not a problem if you're reading trades because they pull out the adverts. It, it doesn't help as well that I think because you read a lot of Image, mm. who just throw all the adverts at the back of the book, yeah, and, and all the adverts yeah, are for true. other Image books. True. So, and it does kind of take you out at, with something that's incongruous, which is something we've touched on before, and we're probably yeah. going to continue to go because we don't like it. Adverts stop it, yeah, and it's like then. The gecko doesn't work, because I know the gecko, but I don't know what he's trying to sell me, man. No, I, I hate the gecko. I would actively avoid buying what the gecko is selling. Whoever the gecko is, we do not like you. Yeah. You're part of the problem. Yeah, get lost, gecko. Um, I, I do like Snickers, though. I, I can't well, remember really uh, that. You know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> the Batman thing was at least DC thing, but it, again, it, it because it was a comic book, you momentarily are taken out of... The comic book you're reading. Yeah, it kind like of... Like a comic book strip advert for Snickers. D- doesn't help that whatever um, is being said beforehand feels like it could lead into a flashback. So we, when you turn the page, it's like, hey, 1960s Batman is trying to sell me Snickers. It's like, all oh, oh, right, yeah. okay. Trying to trick me into reading your advert comic, hey? Yeah. So um, 
But uh, that's metal if that's, men good. If that's the only thing we Snicker can find advert, that we bad. don't like, if that's literally the only thing that we can find that we don't like, then um, it's quite. Ob- I mean, it's already obvious. It's a massive pull for me, and I'm really excited about this series. Um, so yeah, big fat pull it, for it, metal men for me. First time around, I think this might be. I think yeah, this might be a pull for me as well. Um, uh, gosh, I'm kind of. I, I'm curious with it being the the twelve issues and. Mm. It feels like this could be um, an effort to give the kind of Mr. Miracle treatment to Metal Man and kind of deconstruct who they are. I have no problem with that. And yeah, I'm, I'm kind of interested because I don't... I mean, DC seems to be going into a lot of their older stuff. So, you know, we've we had Mr. Miracle, we've got this. I know there's an Adam Strange comic coming up. Okay. So it seems like they are making a conscious effort to kind of grab older properties that people do love but don't get a lot of and go... Well, let's deconstruct this and let's talk about well, the deeper characters. Well, if Metal Men is an example of that, then more please. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm into this. So, yeah, a, a double pull. Double pull. Our first double Two pull. Two pulls out of pass. I don't know. Our <laughs> first double pull. Um, wow. Yeah. Let's move on to the marked. Yeah, let's do that. The first thing I've put in my notes is double size for $3.99 compared to the X-Men, which was full of padding for four dollars ninety nine, which was half the size. Yeah, that's... so Marvel can go suck eggs, and Image clearly care more about art that their art than they do about their profit margins. But Image aren't owned by Disney. Well, yeah, there is that. Um... But I just, I just, it was so the the difference in the amount you got for the amount you paid was pretty obscene, actually. Yeah, and there's less adverts in Image as well, and the. It... <clears throat> words are hard sorry um <laughs> so yeah it, this is a big chunky first issue which yeah if you've listened to the previous shows you'll know it's something i'm constantly asking for so yeah and uh, chunky first issues is a good idea for establishment isn't it it well and that's exactly what we get i think it, it feels pretty like backstory heavy and yeah a lot of lore being thrown at you but it it's kind of feels like you're telling this to us now so we don't have to worry about it later yeah and, I think the I'm prologue, totally into that, I the agree. prologue where within what six pages a young girl is blinded is pretty harrowing, but it sets the tone for what the book's going to be about and how you know. To be fair, it's an image book; it's likely to be dark and grim, isn't it? I mean, they have their moments. Yeah, they do. Um, one of my complaints about this would be the art style. Kind of really annoys me. Um, really, I didn't, I, I didn't I, love it, love it, but I didn't hate it. I, thought I really it like. Was good. I like the character designs. I think um, so. Is it uh, Liza, Lisa? Mm-hmm. Liza, I'm not sure. I couldn't settle on how I was saying it. Uh, good character design. I think the main character, whose name escapes me, uh, Saskia. Saskia. Good design. Um, everyone's got quite a nice style, styled like individual character design. But what bugged me is. There are certain panels where it's like Saskia's head is huge on a tiny body, like a Bratz doll almost. It's a little bit, it's which, a little bit manga, isn't it? But, in but some not, places, not but in like a good way. Like in no. a this is kind of manga style chibi esque. But you don't know that you've. There's mm. also one bit at the front. F- firstly, everyone is super thin in this book. They are, except for one waitress at the start, who ha- looks like they started drawing her quite skinny and then went wait no let's have some variety in here so she, her body is like of a much bigger person than her head is right which i hadn't spotted that but yeah now you've <laughs> said it you're right um you are right so, so the art style w- it was like a little bit jarring at times but then there was some stuff about that i liked, like the designs overall mm, mm. so i felt weird about that in in summary <laughs> the, the concept of this book people who get power from their tattoos is something that I was really into. You know, I, I've got a lot, a lot of tattoos. I, I think a lot of the time, something like this, it um, it's I'm like them too kind of feeling. And I know that's a cliche, but these people covered in tattoos and using their tattoos for inspiration, for magic is, is, is cool. Mm. It is so cool. And I don't know why. I didn't like this book. I it's, can't put my finger on why it's it it wasn't what I wanted. Um, it's obviously the magic tattoos isn't a new thing we've had. No, but it's um, still cool. 
Yeah, no, it's, it's a cool concept, I like, don't get me wrong, and it this feels like a, a good idea of a book. Mostly. <laughs> yeah. But for some reason, I don't know, it's... Um... They put a nice little mystery, who is the who is Lovecraft, who looks a lot like Lurch. Yeah. Uh, who is Big Lurch? Big fan of Lurch, incidentally. Yeah, who is Lurch? And what is Stargate? Well, they tell us what Stargate is, but what yeah. is Stargate right now? Also, really? Stargate? Yeah. No. I'm not going for something less copyrighted. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and and you know, there's a lot of good stuff. It's a story about the consequences of of bad choices, and it's there's a lot of good, but I yeah. just can't put my finger on why I didn't really like it. Um, it's a weird. It's 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 a good premise and. Like I say, I, I I'm glad they've came, kind of given us the story, the backstory up front, and been like, "Hey, here's what you need to know." But yeah, it's it's not the most must read, I guess. No. At least not for me. I no. I think some people are gonna love this. I do too, but, but I don't think I'm some people in this case. The front cover is belting. Yeah. If oh, the front cover's superb, but. Just the inside, no. Um, I think yeah. Between not being a fan of the art and the kind of, I don't know. There's just something that makes me not that engrossed by this. Maybe that's just me, and well, it's obviously not just me because you're here as well. But yeah, well, I think <laughs> maybe it's us. Maybe this is you know. I think maybe I don't know if um someone was into it and they insisted on lending me a trade, I wouldn't say no. But I, I I can't see this ever being a priority read for me, unfortunately. I I think that's completely fair. Um, and I normally love everything that Image sends our way, and Dark Horse. Yeah, you do. That's, I do. Um, yeah. So th- this is a bit of a weird one. I, I there's things I like about it, but I, I'm not overly no. on board. I guess the no. ma- magic tattoos, the idea that there are kind of secret society and. Bitch in front cover. There's another secret society who, you know, are interested in people with powers. It's it's all things that... I, I guess it's it's not the most original of ideas. It's all things we've seen before in other yeah. places. So maybe that's part of it. It's like, I've, I've kind of read this kind of story before, and I think mm. by now most comic book people probably have. Um, yeah, maybe that's fair. But, um, yeah, may, maybe it will be like, when the trade comes out, it'll be a great read. I... I'm not really sure. I... No. So I'm afraid that one is a pass for me. Uh, it's a pass for me as well. Um, but an interesting pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so mm. there you go. So, we'll talk about what we're doing next week. But, big shout out to our sponsor, Travelling Man. Travelling Man are based in Manchester, Newcastle, York and Leeds. They're your local comic book shop. And they are lovely people who sponsor our show. They help us out so that we can keep this this weekly show going on a weekly basis. Hmm. And at the moment they've got three for two deals on Boom Graphic Novels. So there are some great ones. Yeah, you buy three, you only pay for two of them. Yeah. I mean, my recommendation for Boom is God Shaper. I read it last week. It's great. It's good. Really good. Everyone's got their own God. And every God's got their own person. That's a nice idea. Um, yeah. It's an interesting one. It's how Boom the world do works. Buffy as well, don't they? They do. Yeah, I really like the Buffy run as well. They're great stuff. They're, um, everything they've done since, which... Did we touch on this last week? How, um... Or is it? A, I think it's just a conversation that you and I had. Yeah, I like, think, yeah we, in the we talk away from the radio. Yeah, so. we do. So we were just talking about <laughs> how um, there's a there's a new take on the Buffy with a, with all of the problematic '90s stuff, like Xander being a little bit gropey. You, you could have finished thinking. that uh, like Xander. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, and the thing is, it was fine in the '90s, but it needed an update, and uh, I, I really like what they've done with it. Uh, the Boom stuff is is it is worth having a look at the Boom Buffy stuff if you liked Buffy when it was Telly Buffy or indeed like Comics Buffy. Yeah, that was Dark Horse though originally. Wasn't it was it? The, yeah uh, the, the series eight, season, and series nine. Yeah. yeah, but um yeah, go to Traveling Man. They are your local comic book store. If you haven't got a Traveling Man, go somewhere else because you know support your local comic book store. Don't buy them through Amazon or whatever. But yeah, go to Travelling Man if you are in Newcastle, York, Leeds, or the best city in the country, Manchester. 
<laughs> I, I don't have any words, I agree. So. Yeah. Should we talk about what we're doing next week? Yes. Remind we, me, what are we doing next we week? We have got Amazing Mary Jane by Marvel. That's an issue. They're all issue ones again. Amazing Mary Jane by Marvel. Swamp Thing Giant and Midnight uh, Count Crowley Reluctant Midnight Monster Hunter by Dark Horse. Excellent, excellent name. So we clearly <laughs> just put that on because of its daft name. And I, I stick by this decision because it does sound like a fun concept. However, I will add the caveat. Have you heard of trauma films? Yes. I've um, got a friend who works for them. I, I bought a, a video. This is how long ago it was. I bought a VHS of a nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur hell. Okay. Because of the name. It's a trauma film. And it is one of the most wretched, unwatchable pieces of pap cinema I have ever endured. I love a, sh- a bad, schlocky film. But, but a nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur hell is one of the very worst films I've seen. So, as much as I like the name, and as much as I really want it to be good, it could be another Nymphoid Barbarian in Dinosaur Hell. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I, I guess we'll see if that's like a, a scale we're introducing here. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. But uh, Swamp Thing Giant I'm excited about. I really, really like the Alan Moore run on Swamp Thing. I haven't, I'll be honest, I've not read much else. I have finished watching the telly series, and it is Blooming marvellous. So I, I've not finished the TV show, but I have read past Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. So yeah. we, we've both got different Swamp knowledge here. We have, but I, I really like Swamp Thing. And I, I've always intended to read more Swamp Thing, so I'm really quite excited about Swamp Thing Giants because it's a character I love. I love how much you've said Swamp Thing in the last Swamp like, Thing. minute. Yeah. Uh, and Amazing Mary Jane, we needed to find a Marvel book. I'm not excited about it at all. I, I hope I'm surprised. I like MJ. She's had a moment. I, I, I would like to be proved wrong, but I don't think it'll be one that I will enjoy. There was very little to put on from Marvel this week. We did contemplate doing two indies, but um, the other new Marvel release next week is Marauders. But there's, I think, there's six weeks of new X Men yeah. books, and so we're going to like dip in a lot and of X Men to... stuff, if, and try and do some, um, try and do some stuff that isn't isn't X Men. Because there's a lot of X-Men happening. Yeah. And, um, yeah, there was just Amazing Mary Jane, really, which was fine. Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to all three of them. I think we'll get a good variety here. So, yeah. yeah, I'm in. So keep your eye on our social media. Interact with us. Chat to us at Pull or Pass on Twitter. Search for Pull or Pass Radio Show on Facebook. And we are on YouTube, but probably find that link on the... Uh, on the on on the, tw- on the Twitter. Yes. Also, if you want to listen to a non-podcast version, you can go to our Mixcloud, which is mixcloud.com forward slash pull or pass. And that's about all the time we've got this week, Zach. We've pulled, we've passed. And we'll do it all again next week. Thank you for listening. See you next time.